since we're going to be solving quadratic equations using uh, factorizations, there are some special factorizations that I want you to know. So one that, we, that what, one that's very common here is what's called the difference of squares. If you have two perfect squares and you take their subtraction, right, a squared minus b squared, this factors as a minus b times a plus b, um, which people often remember, and you can you can verify this by foiling, right? A times a is a squared. You're going to get a plus a b. You're going to get a minus a b, and you'll get a minus b squared. The a b's cancel out, so you get a squared minus b squared. This difference of squares we're going to use all the time. Uh, the next one is what we call a perfect square trinomial because it's a trinomial because there's three terms in the polynomial. Um, and it's a perfect square trinomial because it factors to be a perfect square, a plus b squared. This will have the form that you start off with a perfect square, you end with a perfect square, and then the number in the middle is just double the square roots of these two numbers put together. If this number is a plus, then this will be a plus. If there's a minus sign right here, you get a minus sign right here. Let's look at such an example. Notice 9x squared minus 6x plus 2. 9x squared is a perfect square. It looks like 3x squared, right? Plus 1 is also a perfect square. You're going to get 1 squared. So this is my candidate for a and b right here. Uh, now, if you multiply this together, a times b, this should look like 3x times 1, which is equal to 3x. Well, if you slap a 2 in front of that then, 2, 2, 2, this should look like 6x, uh, which is exactly what we have right here. Now, there is a negative sign, so when we factor this, we're going to get the following factorization. So 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. This factors as 3x minus 1 squared is equal to 0. Now, when you square something, that just means you repeat it in terms of multiplication. So you get 3x minus 1 times 3x minus 1 equals 0. Now, the zero product property, zip, zappity, zoop, comes into play. The only way this product could equal 0 is if either 3x minus 1 equals 0 or... 3x minus 1 equals 0. You can see that the answer is kind of redundant here, that both possibilities are actually one and the same thing. So as we solve this, we're going to add 1 to both sides. We end up with 3x equals 1. We divide both sides by 3, and we get our solution is going to be x equals 1 third. Now, in this example, this is actually what we refer to as a repeated solution or a repeated root because the factor in play here showed up twice. We only have to consider it once, but because it did show up twice, uh, we call this a repeated root. Um, as another example, you take 2x squared minus 50 right here. This doesn't look like it has a special factorization, but if you factor out the 2, then you get this difference of squares, five, uh, x squared minus 25, which that's going to factor as x minus 5 and x plus 5. And then by the zero product property, you're going to get that x equals 5 or negative 5. You can ignore the 2 because 2 can't equal 0. So the solutions must have come from those that involve the variable 5 and negative 5.